This is the lower part of the frame we'll weld up. Um, first I'll go over a bit of how it's constructed in SolidWorks. When you're making a frame like this in SolidWorks, a good way to do it is with a top level layout sketch. And for this frame, this is my layout sketch here. and it determines the overall size and shape of the frame and the locations of the tubes. And in the layout sketch, I don't draw the tubes themselves, I just draw the center lines of the tubes. And I have a few other mounting points in here, um, these guys, and this is a uh, chain tensioner mount, and also I do in the gusset here. So when I make the actual tube part, I use Convert Entities to copy the tube centerline from the layout sketch into a new sketch and then use that centerline to extrude the tube. So take this tube here for example. Um, I copy the centerline, which is this guy and this guy, into a new sketch using Convert Entities, which is this guy. So here it is here, um, and there's a center line, center line, and then, then I put in the radius. And after I put in the radius, I draw the uh, tube profile. And once I've drawn the tube profile, then I can extrude the tube um, along the center line using the sweep command. And then you get the tube. So. so that's how this whole frame is made. Everything is copied from the layout sketch so that every part in the frame is controlled by the one layout sketch. But I won't go into too much detail about building uh, frames in SolidWorks because there's already a lot of good tutorials on YouTube about this. If you want to learn more about this, you can do a search on SolidWorks layout sketch. Another place I use layout sketches is in the assembly file. So in my assembly, I use layout sketch to position all of the main components like the, uh, the rear axle, the jack shaft, the grip and slide lever pivot point, um, the head tube and the down tube. And in the assembly file, you are not using the layout sketch to make the parts, just position the parts. You're mating parts that you've already made to the drawing. And also in my layout sketch, I draw in my front wheel. Um, so I can see my front end geometry and um, like how much trail I have. Next we'll go over the frame jig for welding the frame up in. This is my frame jig that I do my prototype frames on. So basically what this is is a flat board with blocks uh, bolted to the top of it that hold all the frame parts. And there's some advantages and disadvantages to doing a jig like this. So the drawback to this is because the jig is made on a flat plate, you can't completely weld up the frame in the jig because it's too hard to reach the bottom side. So what you have to do is tack up the frame in the jig, then pull it out and weld it up. So the advantage of this jig is you can build complicated frames without making a mistake. You put all of your jig parts on the frame in SolidWorks, then take a top view of it, and print out a one-to-one -one drawing, and then you build the jig and the frame on top of the drawing of themselves. As long as your drawing is to scale and you haven't made any mistakes in CAD, it's hard to go wrong because you can visually see that every part has been placed correctly on the drawing. 
There's only two jig parts used in this frame uh, besides the board itself. This one I call the saddle block and it's used for holding round tubing. And this one um, I call the angle block and it's used for holding like any flat parts like the in this case the axle hangers and they're made from solid aluminum and they have all they have is just a, a quarter quarter twenty thread on the bottom where it gets bolted to the jig plates and then I might need to drill you know a uh, hole or two in them to hold uh, parts in, in this case they're holding the axle hangers then to assemble the jig uh, you just bring in your blocks and mate them to the frame. Like so. And then you can position them wherever you want. And for the axle hangers, um, I just bring in a angle block that already has the, uh, the mounting holes in it and I just made it to the axle hanger and made its mounting holes up like so and that's all there is to it so in SolidWorks, I make the frame first, then build the jig around the frame. When we actually go to make this, I build the jig first, then make the frame in the jig. Now if we were making a bike frame, we would also have to have uh, this piece for holding the head tube, and this piece for holding the bottom bracket. Now if you did uh, need to hold certain parts more accurately, what you can do is you can bolt spacers in between parts and leave them in the frame through the, the welding and the heat treating process. For example, this was a cargo bike frame that I did and to hold the dropouts as well as possible, I bolted this block here in between the dropouts and then when the frame is tacked up and pulled out of the jig, it stays with the frame bolted in between the dropouts throughout the welding and the heat treating process. So this is another example. This is a Zero motorcycle frame uh, that I uh, did for Zero, and I had uh, steel steel rods that would that would bolt in. Uh, to the seat mounts, had another steel rod that would bolt uh, in between the uh, swing arm pivot, had uh, another steel plate that would um, bolt into the motor mounts there, and there was also some uh, some bars that would uh, bolt in here to the battery box to help keep the battery box square too. But so anyway, these these pieces stay bolted in the frame throughout the welding and the heat treating process. So these are just ways to uh, minimize warping when um, welding out of the jig. But in this case, uh, I don't need any holding fixtures bolted into the frame, uh, mostly because it's chromoly and it's not going through a heat treating cycle. If it was aluminum and it was going through heat treating, then that's where you really need to have like steel fixture uh, pieces bolted into the frame. So the jig plate itself um, is made from uh, box tubing, steel box tubing, with a piece of um, MDF screwed to the top of it. Here, it's the MDF there. Um, and I use MDF over aluminum because it's lighter, it's cheaper, um, and it's easy to drill with a hand drill. And MDF is really flat too. 
So obviously, if you were only going to make one frame, you wouldn't spend the time to make a jig like this. But um, if you build a lot of prototypes or short run frames that are unusual and can't be done in a uh, standard motorcycle or bicycle frame jig, then a jig like this might be something that uh, would be worthwhile to make. So to start off building this frame, uh, the first thing I do is get a top view of the frame with all of the jig parts. So this is the print that I'll take uh, to the printers to get a one-to-one -one drawing of. And I've got all of my um, all of my blocks in here. I've got um, all of my center lines, you know, so I can um, know where to drill my holes for my for my blocks. And then I've also obviously got all of the frame parts in here that I'm going to be welding on. I then go to the print shop. Uh, in this case, FedEx Office. They have a uh, three foot wide black and white printer that works good for this and I bring a tape measure with me to check the drawing. Um, I like it to be within a 32nd of an inch in two feet. This is my jig plate. It's a piece of three quarter inch MDF screwed to a frame made of inch and a half steel box tubing. Underneath I have one cross piece through the middle and I'd say you probably don't want more than 18 inch uh, unsupported on the 3 quarter inch MDF and that's measuring across this way. The only hard part about making this jig plate is uh, just making sure that your steel box tubing is flat before you screw on the MDF. And you want to be sure to use MDF and not particle board or plywood. MDF is the straightest and flattest wood product there is. Next we lay the drawing on the jig plate and tape it down so it's tight and can't move. After taping on the paper, we drill our holes through the paper and the board to bolt the jig blocks on. The tricky part is not getting sawdust under the paper. If you get sawdust under the paper, the blocks will not sit flat on the board and they'll be cocked sideways. To do this, I first cut a hole in the paper with a, like an X-Acto knife. Then I place a round paper weight with a hole in the middle of it on the drawing and then drill the hole. Before I pick up the paperweight, uh, I vacuum it out. If any sawdust did get under the paper, the, the vacuum will suck it out. I then can start placing all of the blocks on the drawing where they go and then bolt them all down. Once we got our blocks on, we can start cutting and putting tubes in place. You can use a square to check your tubes to the drawing to make sure that they're in the exact location. So in part three, we're going to finish uh, cutting all the pieces um, for the frame and putting them in the jig. And then we're going to weld the frame up. 